And now let's get some more discussion on China-U.S. relations under the Biden administration. I'm pleased to be joined by Harvey Zodin, a senior fellow at the Center for China and Globalization, and Su Xiaohui, deputy director of the American Studies Department at the China Institute of International Studies. Great to have you both on China 24. So why don't we begin yeah. with Mr. Zodin there. As we mentioned just now, and as we had expected a long time ago, that Joe Biden... Uh, his policies would be very different from uh, the Trump administration. So how do relations with China could play into his whole strategy? Well, obviously, China is the most important country uh, in the world uh, that America has to deal with. But since President Biden's inaugural speech didn't venture beyond U.S. borders, we may, in fact, have to wait till the State of the Union speech next month to hear it directly from here, from him. But the best evidence is that uh, substantive bilateral relations will be more like Trump than Obama, I'm sorry to say. On the plus side, both countries can now be more respectful of each other. There's an excellent chance that both can work together on issues where our national interests overlap. And it's clear from Biden's actions yesterday, rejoining the WHO and the Paris Climate Agreement, that there's ample room for cooperation. But on the worrisome side, much of the differences will be more stylistic than substantive, more diplomatic, more civil, not shrill, and not wolf warrior. So the temperature is going to be lowered. But there's profound differences, as Secretary of State Blinken explained in his confirmation hearings on Tuesday. He said that Trump was right to take a harder line against China because of any nation, China poses the most significant challenge to the U.S., um, I think it's also true in trade, where Catherine Tai will be a superb but tough trade negotiator, and true in intelligence matters, too, where the new director of national intelligence, Avril Haines, said that China is not America's partner. So it's going to be a really mixed bag. Well, it could take time for the Biden team to formulate his policies on China and for Asia in general. Uh, but maybe that the two countries can start working together on some international uh, framework. For example, Biden has already rolled back some of Trump's initiatives. He's moved to bring the U.S. back to the World Health Organization and even the Paris Climate Agreement. So, Ms. Sue, let me ask you this. How may China and the U.S. cooperate in these fields under Biden? Well, first of all, I noticed that Biden did not uh, did not mention China specifically in his inauguration speech. This was not bad news. It was unlikely for Biden to talk about China in a positive and uh, friendly way in his speech. So uh, the absence of China may leave the two countries some space to try to to mend the relationship. And as for uh, Biden's new policies, Biden's positions on WHO and the Paris Accord, I suppose that his position may bring back some good memories of the China-U.S. relationship. As we all noticed that uh, in uh, Obama's administration, the two countries talk a lot on climate change and try to, to reach some, some agreements and to cooperate on the uh, issues that may influence the human beings in the future. So it was the time, it, it is the time to talk about how we cooperated in the, uh, in the past and how we can move forward in the future. And about the WHO and climate change, Biden's policies also indicate that uh, the United States believe that any country in the world, including the United States, cannot deal with some big uh, problems like uh, climate change or the pandemic alone. So this was a signal that the United States may have a chance to work with the other countries, including China, to address the difficulties and to conquer the, the problems together. So there is still space and opportunities for the two countries to work together. Yeah, and back at home, Biden has huge challenges. For example, he has vowed to take the reins in America's fight against COVID-19. Actually, day two for him is a COVID-19 day. He's, uh, he's making mask wearing a mandatory um, but what can we expect in terms of China-U.S. cooperation on the coronavirus front? Mr. Zodin? Well, uh, Trump, Trump's motto was America first, and uh, it's only uh, the place where he achieved his goal because the U.S. is the world leader in cases and deaths. We're going to see a breath of fresh air from President Biden. 
So it's going to be completely different because there'll be a plan, there'll be professionals executing it. And so the things that have been done and are being done today, like returning to the WHO and apologizing actually to them, uh, Dr. Fauci did this morning, um, and joining the COVAX vaccine accelerator, the two countries going to be working together side by side to make vaccines a global public good. And later today, Biden's going to announce a comprehensive plan to fight the disease. So while the U.S. plans to be uh, more reliant on homegrown PPE than the Defense Production Act, uh, they'll still be reliant on China and other countries. One place China and the U.S. can again cooperate directly is working together on global health security, as Biden is, as your reporter said, reactivating the White House National Security Council unit that Trump abolished before the virus struck. This is really important if we want to conquer the virus now and we want to conquer the viruses that are coming later that scientists assure us are on the way sooner or later. Wow, thank you so much for your analysis, Mr. Harvard Zodin and Mr. Xiaohui. Appreciate it.